On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, how does a ship capsize at a berth? I'm your host, Alan Cagliano. Welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. If you're new to the channel, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, so be alerted about new videos as they come out. So some of you may have seen a video that just came out about a container ship in the port of Iskenderun, Turkey, that capsized at the berth while it was unloading. Let's go ahead and jump to that video, and then we'll break down what happened to this vessel. So this is the video in question here. This is the Sea Eagle. Let me go ahead and lower the volume here a little bit and let you just watch the video. So this vessel, Sea Eagle, was a 38-year-old general cargo ship out of or flagged in Togo, and it was moving cargo from port to port around Turkey. It was in the port of Iskenderun, Turkey, which is just north of the Syrian border at a container terminal uh, offloading. Now, I'm going to go back and look at the video, and we're going to talk about what happens with the stability of the vessel. Now, there's a couple of things you need to know about stability on larger vessels. Now, big container ships, large container ships will have offshore organizations that do calculation stability for the vessel. Because every time you move and take a container on and off a vessel, you affect the trim and stability of the vessel. And obviously, if you get the vessel out of stability, out of trim, you can have the potential that happened here to Sea Eagle. So let's go ahead and break this down a little bit and examine what exactly happens to the Sea Eagle. All right, I'm going to play parts of this video and then we're going to break this down. So a couple of things to notice. Number one, Sea Eagle is a general cargo ship. So she's not big, 260 feet long, 88 meters, I believe, uh, in length. So not a terribly big vessel. She has cranes on her port side. Her port side is the left side of the vessel. This ship is facing bow to the right. Her house is on the stern to the left. So she's starboard side, right side to the berth. The containers are offloading look like 40 foot containers right there. I don't think they're 45s. I think they're 40 foot containers coming up and she's being operated or she's being offloaded by two sets of cranes. It looks like one is this pier side crane that's coming in and taking all the cranes off the starboard side of the vessel. This crane can get here right up against the berth, pick them up. And it looks like that they're taking these containers either off the top stack of the most starboard side, or they may have already removed a row of containers here off the starboard side. And so this can, crane is going to be able to move pretty quick to get containers off. I'm also un un unclear about why so many people are just standing around here. You usually don't see this all the time. Uh, there's, there's a lot of people here, a lot of people without safety vests, a lot of people without hard hats, not exactly sure what's going on here. But anyway, they start removing this container off. And there's no telling how many containers they've taken off the starboard side of the vessel. You'll see that the forward part here doesn't have containers on the top. Neither does this whole starboard side or the F back section here. And now you're going to start seeing up here at the very top here, a crane lifting a container off. Now, I initially thought this crane was on the vessel, but it's not. It's a shore side crane. This shore side crane is taking a container off the far port side of the vessel. And right here at the beginning, 
they, they notice. They notice the ship is rolling. I'm not sure why you're running away from a ship that's rolling away from the berth, but they are. I guess they're concerned about it. But you could have mooring lines snap, and there is danger involved. But the vessel begins to heel to port, and you see the vessel going down. Now, this crane right here was taking off the container. Uh, it's, not the it's not the crane on the vessel. It's a shoreside crane, because you'll see as the vessel rolls, this crane is going to be lifting up and moving this container out of the way. But you see the vessel all of a sudden take her heel. Now, understand this vessel can only hold 236 TEU, 20 foot equivalent units. Remember, half of that is 40 foot equivalent units. Uh, can hold about a little over 4,000 dead weight tons of cargo. Each of these containers can hold as much as 4, 000, uh, 40 tons of cargo. So when you start taking these containers off, you're affecting the trim and stability of the vessel significantly. You're taking blocks of between 20 and 40 tons off a vessel. And the best scenario I have for you to understand this is Jenga. Uh, if you've ever played Jenga and you stack your stack up, you know that as you pull something off, there's force acting down on it. That's gravity. Gravity is acting down on it. Now take your Jenga stack and put it on a float in a bathtub because now you have to deal with not just gravity pushing down, but buoyancy pushing up. What do I mean by that? So much like everybody else, I find my information on YouTube. I found this video on YouTube that I found useful and I thought I use it. So this is a, an issue on ship stability. So ships have a center of gravity. Center of gravity is based on not just the vessel itself, but the cargo, the ballast, the fuel oil on it. And the center of gravity will shift on a vessel, particularly during loading and offloading operations where the center of gravity will shift. And as you take pieces of cargo off, the center of gravity will move and affect the trim of the vessel. Now, one of the things you'll notice here as that vessel kind of slacks there for a second, you'll also see that as the vessel kind of moves here, the liquids in the vessel move. And that creates an added burden called free surface. Uh, as you list the vessel, liquid will shift over. Now, this vessel has nice compartments here that break up the free surface. If these compartments are not here, then all that liquid shifts to one side. And that could be fuel tanks. It could be cargo in, in containers. We don't know. But that's definitely a factor that's in there. So as you're taking containers off a vessel, you have to be worried about where your center of gravity is. Now, at the same time, you have other issues that are at play here. You're not just on land. You're uh, you know, basically floating on the water. So as you move more cargo onto the vessel, obviously your center of gravity begins to shift and your vessel begins to basically sink a little bit into the water. The offset here is you're pushing, displacing out water. And as you displace water out on a vessel, you create buoyancy. Buoyancy is a, is a force that pushes upward. Gravity pushes downward, buoyancy pushes upward. Uh, uh, buoyancy pushes upward, gravity pushes downward. And these two forces, gravity and buoyancy, play uh, kind of a competing force to keep the vessel in check as ships roll and rock. And you see this, this is a vessel out at sea doing it, but it does it in port too. When you're taking cargo off, you get these motions. And the center of buoyancy and the center of gravity changes as you start removing cargo. And typically what you'll see is these forces will counter each other. They will continually counter each other. And that's an important thing. So right here where you're seeing this push, you're seeing, for example, buoyancy wanting to push the vessel upward, gravity wanting to push the vessel downward. As long as the center of gravity is above the center of buoyancy, you're good. You're countering this. You're countering the forces. The forces are basically negating each other. The problem is as the center of buoyancy rises and the center of gravity sinks, then if they get in line with each other, then they're going to act as a rolling motion. And that can actually roll your vessel over. And I think that's the danger that Sea Eagle found herself in, in this position like this, where gravity, particularly in this case, the gravity was far on, actually, it's kind of the opposite of what we see here. Gravity was far on this side and down because of where the center was. And buoyancy was really being pushed up here on the side closest to the dock. And then the writing moment, which is the, 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 the distance between these and what's called the metacentric height of a vessel. And I don't want to bug you with all the 
I'm not a naval architect, and I, I'm not going to bug you with all the facets here, but basically buoyancy and gravity got in line with each other. And all you needed was a little bit of motion or a change in stability to kick it so that gravity began pushing down on the starboard side and buoyancy pushed up on the, uh, excuse me, gravity pushed down on the port side and buoyancy pushed up on the starboard side. And you got a roll of the vessel. Get this tweet here, and I ran it through Google Translate. So all the 24 controllers that fell into the sea from the seagull have been removed from the sea. Necessary controls were made in the wreck area with the help of divers. And so you can see someone here standing literally on the side of the sea eagle, and the vessel now has been boomed off to prevent spill from material in the containers and from the vessel itself. It has sunk below the surface. Uh, the story, all of this is in Mike Schuller's story over on G Captain. So if you want to take a look at it, you're more than welcome to. I'll have the link here in the show notes. Again, this is a really vital issue in the movement of containers. You see this a lot in small vessels. We see these containers lose it. There were stories uh, in Asia not too long ago, one in Vietnam flipped over. And you, you see it happen time and time again. Small vessels are really sensitive to this because of the weight of the container compared to the overall carriage capacity of the vessel. Big container ships, when you're dealing with you know, 5,000 and 24,000 box ships, one or two containers don't mean a hill of beans. They really don't. Plus, they have those offshore sites that do the, the calculations. They've got load computers. They've got stability computers on the vessel that are always adjusting the trim. There's a setting in the ballast system on modern container ships that allow the ships to ballast as they go. But older ships, especially this vessel here, that is quite old in, in age. Again, this is a vessel that was built in 1984. So, uh, you know, obviously not the modern calculations on there, not the modern trim and stability that you need on here. Really dangerous for a situation like this. Fortunately, no one was hurt, no one died, and everybody got away from it. But again, you can see this in particularly smaller vessels dealing with large, contain large cargo in big modular fashion, such as containers. And if you want to read more about it, you can just go ahead and crack out your handy Stability and trim for the ship's officer. This is the third edition. I don't have the fourth edition, which came out in 2009. So uh, you can always pick it up and read it for yourself. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell. So be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, share it across social media. And if you can support the page, how you ask, well, I'll tell you. You can do it one of two ways. You can hit that super thanks button below, contribute directly to the page, or you can head on over to Patreon and become a patron of the page. You'll see the link come up at the very end of the video or in the show notes. Go on over, you become monthly, yearly sub uh, subscriber to the page. Any element helps the page from a dollar to as much as you have, you big, rich container firms out there. I know you want to contribute. I know you at Maersk and CGM, uh, CMA, CGM, and all the big firms want to contribute to what's going on with shipping because I keep you in the news. Until our next video, this is Sal signing off.